Hi everyone, my name is Devin Valenciano. Thanks for the introduction, Leslie, and I am a PM on the VS Code team. And like Leslie just said, I'm here to talk about agent mode uh, for serious developers. So agent mode is this really cool thing that's built into Copilot that allows you to solve bigger problems. It's this autonomous coding assistant that can iterate on its own progress. And one of the coolest things it, it does is that it lets a PM like me pretend to be a serious developer for a little bit, or a serious data scientist, as we're about to show. So the example that I'm going to run you all through is this real piece of work. So this is what's called a Kaggle competition. It's the data science equivalent of leap code. And they put uh, full competitions online for people to uh, put submissions up and, um, and try and solve uh, difficult problems in data science. Um, and so uh, they give you a big overview of what the problem is. Um, they give you some source data to use. And so for this particular problem, this is a housing price uh, estimation problem. Uh, I've got a description of the data, I've got a test CSV, the training set, and a sample submission file. Great. So let's go ahead and go straight to VS Code and get started right away. So you can see I've got a couple things set up here and that's it. I've got a prompt that I'm going to use to prompt agent mode. And I've got the, uh, the files that I just showed you pre-downloaded. And other than that, um, we're going to see what agent mode does solving a very real problem in real time. So I'm going to go ahead and you can see it's already got the prompt file as context. I'm also going to give it explicit context to those uh, local files that I downloaded. And I'm going to just go ahead and say, follow the prompt. And wish me luck. So what's happening right now is uh, GitHub Copilot is using agent mode. And it's already figured out, oh, I'm going to solve this Kaggle housing price problem. And it does something great right away. It says, I'm going to go fetch this URL um, that has the actual competition data. And it's using the built-in fetch tool to go ahead and do that, which is great. So that was uh, invoked by um, Copilot agent mode. And then what does it do? It does exactly what a human would do, right? It goes and reads the description file and reads the whole thing. And it's like, oh, OK, I understand a little bit about what this data is looking like. And then it's stepping through each one of the files uh, just 10 lines of it to get a sense of, okay, what's this training data set look like? What's this test data set look like? And what's my sample submission file look like? So it's solving this problem exactly the way a human would go ahead and do it. It's just saving me a ton of time and, and actually probably preventing me from learning a little bit, but it's a great learning tool um, to, to, to work alongside. So actually just now it invoked another built-in tool, the Create Jupyter Notebook tool. And so for those who don't know, uh, VS Code has some really incredible built-in native notebook support. Um, and this is like a primary tool among data scientists in the field. And so, um, yeah, basically it went ahead and created the solution notebook file, which is fantastic. Um, it's uh, connected to a Python kernel, kernel a virtual environment. Um, so it, it's uh, selected the correct kernel. And now it's going to go ahead and edit the notebook and add all the required cells to solve this problem. So we'll see what it comes up with in a second. Now, while it's going ahead and thinking about that, I'm going to go ahead and, and show you a couple things here. So right now, we're using the Claude 3.7 Sonnet model. I love Claude 3.7 Sonnet. It's my favorite of all the ones listed here. But you, we have plenty to choose from within Copilot. You've got Claude 3.5. You've got GPT-4.1, 4, 4.0, 4 um, Gemini and Preview. So there's lots of different options. Um, and I just happen to really like Claude 3.7 for this particular project because it can go deep. Um, and you can see here we're using agent mode uh, among the other, the other different options here. Um, so. Sometimes, you'll see with agentic flow, things get a little bit caught in the pipes. So this one's been thinking a, a little bit longer than I'd like it to. So I'm actually going to stop it. And I'm going to go ahead and just say, continue the problem. And let's see what it does next. Continue imp implementing. Oh, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's still thinking, um, but we'll give it a little second here. And yeah, you can see, um, oh, I mentioned prompt files earlier. So this uh, allows you to save custom prompts that can be used across multiple projects that can be tied to a VS Code profile. That's a really cool element that's been added more recently. Um, and uh, yeah, so this, I didn't have to actually type in the prompt. I just referenced a prompt that I'd written in the past and, and that worked out really, really well. So. And unfortunately, with agentic development flow, we have these little moments where it's like, ah, shoot, 
I know this should work a certain way, but it's not quite deterministic. So this was taking a little bit of time to think. I'm actually going to give it one more try here. And if it doesn't um, continue working on the problem, I actually have a video just in case this happened showing the full end to end and all the beauty of that. So um, yeah, let's see, let's see if it can go ahead and, and kind of find its spot and get started to working on that solution file here. Okay, well, I'm going to let that think for a little bit, but in the meantime, I'm going to pull up a video of, that I took just two hours ago of me doing this exact same thing, um, and I'm going to talk through some of that, and then we'll let that run in the background and see if it eventually figures it out. Um, but let's go ahead and make this full screen and turn down the volume and skip to the part where it starts working on the notebook. Turn. Turn. So this is exactly where we were um, on the live demo, except this is a version I recorded just two hours ago. And so basically what happens next is it comes up with this great header file or, or header uh, cell that explains exactly what the problem is and what it's going to do. Break, it breaks it down step by step into six, six con uh, concise steps. And then it goes ahead and starts actually writing cells. And so you can see it starts with a setup and installation cell, and it does something really cool where it actually asks if I want to allow it to run cells because it doesn't want to run anything malicious actually in the editor. And so uh, in, in this demo, I actually went ahead and say, yep, run all the cells for the rest of the session, um, which saves me a bit of time. And then, yeah, this is one of my favorite parts of using these agentic tools is getting through the setup and installation phase. Um, so this just installs all the required packages. I didn't tell it which packages to go install. It decided based on the problem set to which packages would be most useful in solving the Kaggle competition. And that saves me so much time. Even if I don't know exactly what library does which thing, I can go then research. It gives me a starting point to then go learn more efficiently. Um, and so, yeah, it installs all the, the required packages. And then it, it, you can see it's actually adding a cell now to go ahead and import all those libraries. And so it's got a nice header for me. And it's got this nice cell to, to go ahead and import um, all the libraries that we're, that we're including here. And you can see there's the SK Learn modules, which it's going to use um, for training some of the sim more simple models like linear regression, Lasso, Ridge, Elastic Net. And then also we've got XG Boost there. Um, so uh, clearly it's, it's going to try and tackle this training problem from a variety of different angles. And I'm excited to show you exactly what that looks like. And so actually I can, that's one of the benefits of showing you a video now is I can skip ahead just a little bit. So this, is, uh, this import cell always takes a little bit of time because it's importing a lot of content right there. But if we skip ahead just a tiny bit um, to when that's completed, um, yeah, so it finished adding uh, all the imported libraries. And again, if you just think about how much time I've already saved just by getting the packages installed and then doing the import step, that's so much thinking and preparation and, and one of my favorite parts of using these agentic tools. Uh, and so next, it jumps right into the exploratory data analysis. So it, it does what any human would do, and it's, it reads in the data, and it starts to take a look at what the data actually is and what it can be used for. Um, and I just want to highlight here, this is something that's like really, really uh, a competitive advantage of VS Code is our built-in native notebook support and how those notebooks are already, uh, can be used directly with these agentic flows. Um, it's just, it's something that I think we do just so much, uh, so much more for than our competitors in the space. Um, and I, I think it's really exciting. So you can see the data has been loading in. We have so many different variables on what house prices look like in this particular area in Idaho, or sorry, Iowa. Um, so you've got the lot area, you've got the street type, you've got whether or not they have an alley, you've got all sorts of square footage information. And so the data comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes. It's not all just integers and floats. 
And so the next thing that uh, this goes and does, and you can see actually here, it asked me to continue to iterate, which is great, right? We don't want an agentic mode to just keep spinning and spinning and, and eventually spending compute that it doesn't need to compute. But in this case, I love what Copilot agent mode is doing for me. Like I want that to continue. I want to keep generating a solution here. And so the next thing it does is it continues that exploratory data analysis and it's looking for missing values in the training data set. Um, and, and that's just something that might not even cross my mind if I was going and solving this problem. Like, oh, what's the data quality like? Like, do, do I actually have everything I need in the data set to go inject the data into the models? And so um, you can see it's got these nice distribution graphs that it generates. Um, you can see that the data was very skew right. Um, but then they do, uh, again, just another example of something I wouldn't think to do right away, but it, it, it automatically does a log transformation on the data and sees that the data is more normal that way. And so it's, it's looking at all these different facets of the data that I personally would never think to explore because I'm not a professional data scientist. But with agent mode, I can start to learn about these topics a lot faster. Um, and oh, this is one of my favorite pieces here is it actually generates a correlation matrix and shows me all the top variables that are correlated with the sale price of the existing data set of homes. Um, and so you can see here that the you know, overall quality and the, the year that the house was built and the, the square footage of the garage, actually, these are all highly correlated with how much the house eventually sells for. Um, and then it jumps right into the next step. So handles pre-processing of the data. So this is it handling new, uh, miss missing values. It's uh, transforming categorical variables, so variables that are you know, in a string format into something that's more usable for these machine learning models. Um, so it's just doing all of this prep work and cleaning work that I would have to do manually. Um, and it's generating, like this cell was 86 lines of data cleansing that were, was generated almost instantaneously, which is just fantastic. I mean, that's so much time that's saved on actually typing and putting this together. And it gives me the opportunity to read through that and learn all the, the content much quicker. Um, this just does a little bit more transformation to the data. And for time's sake, I'm gonna skip just a tiny bit forward on that. And then it gets straight into model building and training. Um, so uh, we saw earlier it imported all sorts of packages, which is just so cool. Um, and now it's gonna go ahead and train all of the different models that it has available to it and do different types of evaluations on how accurate that model prediction was based on the training data set. Um, and so in this uh, initial cell here, here, it's just doing the basic models. So the linear regression, the ridge regression, the lasso regression, and elastic net. Um, and it goes and generates all of this for me. It trains the models and it gives me those RMSE values, the root mean square error values that lets me know just how accurate each of these is. But then it takes it a step further. And again, it, it just keeps doing things that I wouldn't think to do as the human. Um, but it, it's like, let's train three more models, three more advanced models. And so it does a random forest regression, it does gradient boosting, and it, it goes and uses this XGBoost library. And to be honest, I don't even know what XGBoost is. But, you know, Asian mode and Copilot does. And so, yeah, it, it's uh, running three more models here. And then it, what it could do is select the one that had the lowest error rate and then go ahead and create a submission file on that. But it actually does something even more advanced where it takes the, uh, the, the seven models that were generated and all of those sets and it creates what's called an ensemble. Um, so it's kind of like, I guess in the simplest terms, like a combination or an average of all the different models that have been, been used. Um, and so that extra step ends up creating even that much more of a high quality prediction. Um, and all of this was done um, completely autonomously. In this, in this video, I submitted the one prompt and I let it go off and it's just been, been thinking the entire time and doing all this work. And so you can see, yeah, it's creating the, the uh, ensemble here in a second, and then it's going to generate a submission file. And then I'll just go ahead and, and skip ahead to, uh, this is back on the Kaggle website, submitting the submission file, and we go ahead and submit it. And again, I don't recommend that people are you know, submitting Kaggle submissions, and this isn't the right way to, for this to be done, but it's a really quick way to learn, and it demonstrates that these agentic tools can be used for real things. And so... I got a score of 14,000 on this, which equates to about 300th place out of 6,000 submissions is what I would be explaining in this video right now. Um, so top 5% um, generated in about 10 minutes time um, with 
very little, you know, serious development on my end. So thank you so much for, for taking a look and I really appreciate you all working with me today. <laughs>